Yellow Jacket's coming in and out of that thing. Welcome back, guys. Today we are at my bees in Oregon City. This is an undisclosed wild berry location. Well, it's November, so the blackberries are no longer in bloom, but you get the idea. This is mainly a late wildflower place now. There were a lot of blackberry blooms when I had moved the bees in here in August. A couple of these hives came from a blackberry place in Westland, Oregon, and I'm looking at the only hive that produced honey all year long right now. This was a very weird honey year for us. I had nine healthy hives total, yet only this hive produced enough honey for me to take. I still haven't put my finger on the cause of it. People have been asking me how much honey one hive can produce, so thanks to this hive right here, I have an answer. Three gallons. However, there was still enough space for the bees to store more honey, so it could be more than three gallons. Anyways, this hive went from excellent to not so excellent in bee numbers since I brought them here to their new location. The bees had been pretty low on food at one point, which surprised me, so I fed them as much as I could to get them back on track. They had plenty of food when I left them alone for a few weeks, but today I came to feed them one last time until I need to cover them all up for the winter. Wait a minute, guys. We got a problem. There is a yellow jacket invasion here. The yellow jackets have been the worst we've ever seen them in previous years. This year has been the worst. It didn't matter how many traps you'd set up or how many nests you'd spray, there would still be hundreds buzzing around the beehives. But this is robbing activity going on, not just buzzing. Let me check the other hive entrances. Yep, yellow jackets coming in and out of the hive behind the honey hive. Not as bad though, but still not good. So, how are the bees looking inside it? Hmm. They look good enough, even though they aren't oozing from the feeding holes in the inner cover. Let's check the single box behind me. Oh, well, the guard bees seem to be fighting off the yellow jackets okay. That's kind of what I'm using those mouse guards for is so that the guards can defend against honey robbers a little better. I wasn't expecting the yellow jackets to go through them so easily since those holes are small enough even the honeybees were having difficulty going through them. But yellow jackets are specially suited to go through tighter places. The population still looks good in the other two hives, so I'll work on the honey hive and prep it for covering later with the rest of them. I'm definitely not going to feed them now because that will attract the yellow jackets even more. So I'll take the feeder off of it. I hope there's bees in there. I hope, I hope. But I doubt it with that many wasps invading it to steal the honey. That's all they have to steal anyway since the honeybee queen isn't laying anymore until next year. Well, hmm. That's interesting. There's a lot of dead wasps that have drowned themselves in the feeding reservoir. Somehow they found a way in the cover box and couldn't find a way out. Oh well. Good riddance. <laughs> Please let there be bees inside. Please. Well, there's probably three frames of bees 
protecting the queen right now. The yellow jackets are so bad I can't show you. I must cover them. That is a severe loss of bees considering what the hive used to have. I would love to completely cover all the entrances to that hive, but that will prevent the bees outside from getting in again, and the bees inside from getting out. Even though it pains me to do so, I'll have to let nature take its course with this hive. But there's one thing I can do though. I will use the sugar syrup I brought with me to fill some feeders I left behind last time I was here. If the yellow jackets are looking for honey, the syrup I put in these feeders will serve as a temporary deterrent until I can come up here again with wasp traps to put around the hive. That's pretty much all I can do at this point for yellow jackets. As unbelievable as this sounds, this is all part of beekeeping. You buy and raise hives, and then you lose some to a known or unknown cause that you cannot control sometimes. There are good seasons to keeping bees, and then there's bad ones. The good news is that not all my hives are suffering like this, and there are a couple good hives that I might be able to use for private garden pollination next year, if all goes well with them. I'm almost wondering if it was this reservoir feeder that produced a stronger, sugar watery scent that caused all the wasps to zero in on this one hive like that. Especially since none of the other hives that were fed with these drip feeders had any wasp problems. Well, something to experiment with next year. In the meantime, thanks for watching guys, and God bless.